because he played with some of the great groups in American music. Arsenio Rodriguez, Cachao, Lopez, Benny Moray, Eddie Palmieri. He played with many of the great groups. Can you imagine he was born in 1928 in central Cuba? And he went from there. I moved to Havana, moved to New York. And he toured with the Sonora Matancera. I don't know if any of this matters to anyone. No, no one listens to them anymore. But the point I'm making is the energy of these musicians. These preeminent charanga-style musicians are astounding. I have a friend who's a musician. I want to tell you a little secret. He, owns a, he has a band, and he plays. And I, I have no musical ability, but I, he loves me. I love him, you know, spiritually. And he's like a brother to me. He calls me older brother when he calls me. Would you believe this? This guy's my hero. He calls me older brother. So I said, you know, one of the things I've always wanted to do to get away from radio and change it up a bit is to perform with a musical band. I want to sing with an orchestra, like a band. So he said, you're going to sing with my band. But I came up with a name. I'm not going to tell you where or when, but very soon I will be performing as Miguelito from the Bronx. <laughs> That's going to happen. We're going to see how that goes. I said, do not introduce me by my real name. Just say it's me. We have a special singer tonight, Miguelito from the Bronx, but don't say it till after I leave the stage. And I'll say, if I don't freak out and I can do it well, I'll come back. Because I really want to do something other than the, the, the stuff I do on radio. Radio is beautiful. It's great. But I have only one instrument. That instrument is my voice. So all I have is one instrument. Could you imagine the energy I'm going to get from singing with a group on stage? What it's going to do for my career in radio? See, life begins when you want it to begin. There's no age limit to when your life can begin and take a new direction. But I'll tell you a little secret about new beginnings. You want to hear it right now? I know I'm into like this thing I do. Here's the thing about new beginnings. They have to come from a crash and burn. It's almost impossible to change your life in any significant ways unless you have to. You have to be so desperate in one way or another or you're not going to change your life. You know, it's, it's good enough you can read books on it and this and that. You're not going to do anything. You say, yeah, I want to do this. I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to learn French. You're not going to do it unless you have to. There's got to be an imperative. So I got pushed into a corner emotionally. And I know what I'm going to do is I'm going to sing my way out of it. Would you believe it? I painted my way out of it last year. I painted watercolors. This year I want to sing. Why? Why? Why not? I'm still alive. Well, I'm still alive. I could do anything I want, right? Now, what does it have to do with a talk show? I don't know. What do I know? Maybe it'll affect my performance in a better way. Maybe I'll just feel better. All I know is that when I was driving home in the rain over the Golden Gate Bridge on Saturday night, and I turned on that radio, and I put it way up. I forget the kind of system I have in the old Mercedes. I have a, a Mercedes I bought in, in 2008. I will not sell it. This monster I call Wilhelm, this S600 12-cylinder beast, blue, dark blue, not a nick in it. I have, I have nickophobia. So when I go to a parking lot, I'm one of these guys who parks way out on the edge, you know, or parallel parks here. I, I do it. I have ding neurosis for the car. I came up in another generation. I shine my shoes. I line them up on my bed. I don't let my car get dings. You get it? I wash my car. This is the kind of thing. So the car is like, I love it because the sound system, the driving, the power. And remember in my novel, Abuse of Power, we're set in San Francisco. I named the car that Jack Hatfield drives, Wilhelm. Remember that? Raise your hand if you remember my book, Abuse of Power, which you bought and read. Well, he had a car called Wilhelm, and it was based upon my car called Wilhelm. But I was driving Wilhelm home over the Golden Gate Bridge the other night, and it was one of those moments. You ever get those moments where everything is right in your life for a second? You're not high. You're not high on anything. But you turn the music up, and suddenly the whole world's perfect for you. And you start to raise the music, and your whole body is in there, up there. And I'm back at 18 in the, at the third New York, snow in the face, going into the city, the dancing. And I said, it's still happening, man. It's happening here. It's still happening. The world didn't go away. It didn't disappear. All you got to do is reach out for it, and you can have it. So, you see, you can paint yourself into a dark hole with politics. This is another thing I want to tell you. If you only focus on politics and on the negative of what's happening to the country, it can make you sick. You can really curl up in a ball and die, and you cannot let that happen. This is the most essential thing I've ever said to you. As political as I am, and as political as the show is, that cannot be the be-all and end-all of my existence, nor should it be of any man's existence. Obama or Sanders or Hillary or Cruz or Trump cannot be the sun, the moon, and the stars. There are other galaxies, for God's sakes. Okay, the galaxy of art, the galaxy of music, the galaxy of sculpture. 
This is what art is. This is why it was created. This is why art is created. Because they, too, get desperate. They, too, get desperately backed into a corner. And they come out of it by singing, dancing, painting, sculpting. Now, having said all of that, I want you to imagine a world where there is no music. You turn the radio on, and all there is is a religious broadcast. I want you to imagine the museums have been burned to the ground. All the art has been removed. It's been replaced with nothing except scriptures from one religion. I want you to imagine a world where women cannot wear pretty clothing, where they must wear medieval tents to hide their bodies. And I want you to understand that that's the world that's going to happen unless you comprehend what Obama is doing to this nation, what Merkel is doing to Europe, and what must be done to stop this from emerging. Back in a minute. Energy, energy, soul, the heart. B.B. King, 88 years old, toured 70 countries. I mean, the guy had diabetes for the last 20 years of his life. It didn't stop him. He didn't watch TV and run out and get a prescription drug and start hobbling over to Obamacare. You keep going. What's this with every minute? A cripple job. Every second, something's wrong with somebody. Why has this country gotten like this? Are there more people sick or is there more medication that doesn't even work? What do you think? It all works? You take it for this, it gives you that. You, could, you ever see what they do? Every ad on, on Fox News is for a drug. Every ad during the debate was for another drug. You cannot get away from the drug. must be... Uh, Something going on here with the drug companies. And I love the candidates all attack drug companies. But we'll get after the big pharmaceutical companies. We'll get after big insurance. Yeah, right. Sure. We're going to get after the big banks, Bernie. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure, Bernie. Where are you getting your money from? The ILGWU? I mean, the needle trades have long gone from America, Bernie. Where's your money coming from, Bernie? Yeah. And then on the other side, look what you got. Cruz, the only conservative. Cruz with Cruz, Trump fake, Trump really a liberal. Take it from me. Vote for Cruz. Everyone else no good. They want to lose another election. You know, a lawyer once said to me 30 years ago when I was hot-headed, now I'm not. Then I was a hot-headed youngster. Someone had robbed me of something and I wanted to do something. And he said to me, "You want to be right? Or you, you want to be right or you want to be smart?" I said, "What?" I said, "I want to." He said, "Listen to me. Do you want to be right or do you want to be smart?" I I I said, "He said, "Listen to me." Do you want to be right or do you want to be smart? He finally taught me something. Well, I'm trying to teach all of you voters something. You want to be right or you want to be smart? You want to win 60, 70% of what you believe in or zero? Trump can go all the way. He'll give you 60 to 70% of your conservative agenda. He's going to give us borders. He's going to give us language. He's going to give us culture. He'll build a wall. He'll rebuild the military. He'll tighten up the economy. That's pretty good. Cruz is promising us the world that he can't win. He cannot win. There's a number of reasons I keep telling you. I'm an expert on this. You know how some people are experts in certain things? I can tell you that he has no political appeal visually to the, to the average voter. He, if you look at him, let me put it to you this way, without debasing his politics or his intellect. He looks villainous. He's a, he's a villainous look. The eyebrows, the black hair, the, the oily look. He looks like a villain. If Harvey Weinstein was casting kind of a villainous character, like almost a vampire, he, if you wanted a, if you wanted a picture of vampire face, and you were you were you were casting for actors, Cruz with a little blood coming down from the side of his mouth. I'm not saying he is. I'm telling you. I'm trying to give you an insight into how the average person votes. They vote for looks at the last minute, most people. They don't really know what their politics are. Say, so, ah, I don't like Hillary. Let's say, they, let's say even they get to that point. No, I'm not voting for that old commie, that loudmouth spritzer. I'm not voting for her because you know she's corrupt. We don't want her again. So let's see what they have on the other side of the, of the menu. Let's see, we got Cruz. He eh, looks like a villain. Got that rich guy with the hair. Ah, let's take the rich guy. At least he's tall and he's fairly good looking and he's going to make money for us. That's what's going to happen. They're not into the minutiae of the details. Just trust me, they're not as detailed-oriented as you are. So that's it, folks. I mean, pretty much ran into the last minute of the show. If I told you what I, yours truly, had to go through today to get the show off the ground, you'd say no one could do this at any age. Yeah, but I did it. Two of my studios were down owing to the rain. I had to drive to a third studio that I keep in 
got here half the equipment was down. I was on my hands and knees making my equipment work to two minutes before the show, cursing, screaming, yelling. I said, I can't do this anymore. The guy said, wow, what a show you did. I said, yeah, I loved it. I love crawling on broken glass again for a radio show. Why? Because the show must go on. Why? Just because, that's all. You don't want to know about the subway ride the musician took to get to that, to that concert hall. You don't want to know about the morning. You don't want to know about the afternoon. You don't want to know about any of it. All you want to do is hear him play his trumpet. Cachao, Chocolate, Michael Savage. Does this not make you want to get up and dance? It's beautiful music. Come on, you Anglos. You can enjoy it. Come on, you can get off your high horse. Get off that horse. Savage.